Next question is from Austin Owens Actual. Which training style do you all prefer, percentage-based or RPE-based? If not either of these, what do you recommend? I laugh at these questions. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, if People you know, get so hung up on those. They things. do, and it's not that. I mean, I, I understand if you're a competitive athlete, Bro, and it no, makes more sense. I, like a power lifter, that's about it. Yeah, that's it. That's what I, I mean. That's, that's, that's where I stop. That's it. If you're a power lifter, this makes total sense, and it's the only time I don't laugh at this. Mm -hmm. But I built a competitive physique. The one percent of the one percent at the professional level without ever paying attention to any. No, of shit. I, I like never once. I like feel. Any of shit. It's always feel for yeah, me. Yeah. It's always feel because I could have a client come in and you know maybe today we're supposed to do eighty percent of whatever, and I ask them, hey, how do you feel? Or I'm watching them as a trainer. Yeah. Oh, it looks like they're a little out of it or whatever. We're going to go easier. You have to train your body in, in, for that moment. How you feel physically and also mentally. By the way, you can feel great physically, feel poor mentally, and that'll have a massive effect on your performance and how your body recovers and responds. So really, it should be based off of how you feel. Now, here's the problem with that, is that a lot of people want objective measures. Yeah. Like, tell me, number, whatever. Now, I know heart rate variability was promised to do that. The problem right. with heart rate variability was uh, it's kind of a pain in the ass. You got to be real good at measuring. You have that right technology to do it. Now, what it did- it's not always accurate either. Not always accurate, uh, but it was better than nothing. It was probably the most objective right. way that we saw. Um, and then not that long ago, we had uh, uh, DeFranco on the show. And I thought what I he said- I love what he Was doing. absolutely brilliant. So I'll show- Which, of course, it came from someone like him. Yeah, Somebody who we respect in the industry, one of the best- trainers and coaches that's been doing this for a really long time. Of course, he came up yep. with a, a a simpler yet very effective way. Very effective. So I'm going to show everybody. So uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see I have a, and I don't know how to say this right, a dime, a dynamometer. Dime, dynamometer. Dynamometer. Dynamite. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you, you, you essentially you squeeze this and it measures your grip strength. And so here's what he said. And I thought this was absolutely brilliant. So these are devices, they're very typically inexpensive. I know we have one on our site, so you can buy these on our site if you want to. You essentially, what you do before your workout, it, first off, you want to set up a uh, kind of like a, a, a control, right? Yeah. So every day before you work out- You want to calibrate. You want to squeeze this as hard as you can with both hands and and write down the the whatever number you got. And then also at the end of your workout, mark down how you felt. How strong were you? Did you have a lot of energy? After about a week or two, you'll start to see some correlations. Oh, on the days I had great workouts, my number was this. On the days I was whatever, my numbers were this. Then you can start to use the number that you get on your, your gripper test or whatever as a way to dictate, for those of you that want objective numbers, how hard you should work out. So you squeeze it and say, oh, wow. It's a readiness gauge. It's testing your CNS. Which is great. So, so you, you kind of know what you're working with for that day and like how, how hard you should push. Or, you know, it's just a, it's, it's a, it's a more of a, a way to actually find a real metric out there to kind of identify uh, how you're feeling. But it's still feel-based. Yes. Well, yes. That, that's the reason why. I mean, our good buddy, Craig Caperso, he built an app around this. It was the flaw that we saw in this was like, you can't have a computer mathematically figure this out for yeah. you. Perpetual progress doesn't exist. No, and it's it all over the place. And it and it and it can't figure out what happened last night. I mean, last night could have been you got some crazy news that was devastating with your family. Then you stayed up all night. You got terrible sleep, and then here you are for showing up to your workout. And you that that you can't mathematically figure that no. out. And your computer has already told you what you're supposed to do that day. Where mm -hmm. me as a coach, if I was training you, I would ask you, How was your night last night? You said, Oh, I just found out my, yeah. my grandmother passed yeah. away and I didn't sleep very much. Me as an experienced coach knows right away. I might have had a plan today that I was gonna I was gonna push you to this RPE or I was gonna yeah. push you at this percentage, but now I'm calling an audible because I know how what happened last well, night. Well, well see, this is the problem too. Back to our earlier conversation about tech products, like they, this is what they don't understand. Like there's a lot more to it than than ones and zeros. You can't just it doesn't just work out in a perfect formula and, and laid out like there's so many yeah. variables and you have to have like individual coaching to make it work. Right, and, and this is why I like and again. And it's not perfect. You got to base it off of how you feel and how you perceive yourself to feel. This is important because people tend to second guess themselves. Do I really feel good? 
do I really feel bad? Whatever you feel, you feel, and that's kind of your truth, right? That's the truth of how your body's going to perform essentially. But the reason why I like the dy dynamo meter, dynamo meter, I think I'm saying right, uh -huh. is because it measures in real time your CNS uh, and how great you're squeezing mm -hmm. right there. So it's like literally right before you work out, you crush it with your hand and you see what your score was and then use that in combination with how you feel. Like, I feel kind of crappy. Mm -hmm. Let me check. You squeeze it. You see your number. You're like, oh yeah, definitely. Well, I have an the, easier workout. And that's today. the the, tr the the trick here too is not like and because I, I want to caution because you're going to get people that buy this and be like, Sal, my numbers are this. What should I do? It's like you need to do the work, just like I would coach somebody with nutrition. You got to see what your numbers. You need are. to your track. Trend. Yeah, you need to track for a while to find out what a high number and a low number that's is right. for you. Yep. What do you What do you I'm squeeze? You yeah. Up. What do you What is the peak? You like if you track? And I like to see two weeks personally. Like I like to see two weeks of every single morning. Morning, it's the same time, same everything. You you squeeze this thing, right? And you find out over those two weeks, okay, where's my high and where's my low? And then that's your range. And so then going forward, when you go to squeeze this before you go to work out and you see where you land it, oh, wow, I'm on the peak. This is, a, I'm going to get after it today. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, wow, I'm towards the bottom. Or, oh, I'm in the middle. So, and you adjust your intensity based off like that. Absolutely. It's perfect.